Refraction is the bending of light as it travels from one transparent medium to another. Now, a medium is just a substance like air or glass or water. And we can see refraction in everyday life if we look at a straw. So when you look at a straw in a glass of water, you might notice that it appears to be bent at the surface of the water. And that's simply because the light is travelling through glass and water to reach you and is bending each time. Now, refraction is not to be confused with reflection, which is the bouncing off of light from a surface, not the passing through. Now, you need to be able to draw a ray diagram of refraction and be able to predict what rays of light will do as they pass through a glass block. And to do that, you're going to need to use a ray box and a glass block. So here is my glass block. I've put it on a piece of paper and I've drawn around it. A ray box is simply a light bulb that's surrounded by a black container to make sure all the light travels out in only one direction. And the direction it travels out is dictated by this slot here. Now you can choose to have triple or single slits, but today we just need one ray of light, so I'm going for the single slit. Now the ray box is attached to the power pack, and the power pack is what gives it its energy. Now when I turn it on, you'll see that the light turns on. You should have your ray box on about 12 volts, because that will give you the best ray of light for your diagram. So, now you've got your ray box and your glass block. All we need to do is position them so we get some refraction. And you'll see that as I move the ray box, the ray of light appears to bend as it goes through the glass block. Now, I'm going to position this to get a nice amount of bend. That seems quite good. Have a play around and see what gives the best one for you. Now, I need to trace where the rays of light are going. So when I take the ray box away, I can still work out what happened. So to do that, I'm going to put two crosses where I can see the ray of light passing through before the block and two crosses where I can see the ray of light passing after the block. I'm finished with that now, so I can turn it off, put it away and start to draw my ray diagram properly. So the first step is to join up these rays, these crosses, to give me my rays of light. So here's my first, this is my incident ray, the ray that is hitting the glass block like so. Then I have my refracted ray later on, which is coming out of the glass block. And we can see that they don't match up. Now the light travelled through the block, it's hard to see it, but it travelled through in a straight line. So I just need to draw a line that matches up those two rays. Now ray diagrams should generally be drawn in pencil, and you also need to draw an arrow on each ray of light to show the direction that the light is travelling. The next step is to add in a normal. Now a normal is just a perpendicular line to the surface of the glass block and you put it where the light ray hits the block. So for example here, it's a dashed line like so and there's another one as the light leaves the block. And this allows me to calculate the angles of refraction and incidence. So I start off, this is my first angle of incidence, and this is my angle of refraction. Now I'm going to measure these using a protractor. Now I can see that my angle of incidence here is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, about 61 degrees. My angle of refraction, if I swizzle this around, is 10, 20, 30, about 36 degrees. Now we can see that the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence and that the ray of light appears to have bent towards the normal. Now this happens when light travels from a less dense to a more dense medium, such as going from air to glass. And it happens because the light ray slows down. If I repeat the process at this point, now this is my angle of incidence because this is the light going into the boundary and this is my angle of refraction. I measure them again. I see that it's 10, 20, 30, 36 degrees. And that, if you'll notice, is identical to the angle of refraction from before. If I measure the angle of refraction here, I will notice that it is, let's line that up, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 61 degrees, which if you notice is the angle of incidence from before. So as the light has traveled from the glass to the air, it has bent away from the normal and the angle of refraction is bigger than the angle of incidence. And this happens because 
the light ray has sped up again. So, in refraction, when light travels from a less to a more dense region, it slows down, the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence, and when it travels from a dense to a less dense region, it speeds up and the angle of refraction is bigger than the angle of incidence.